All right, guys, so about a week ago, I had an accident up on the mountain doing some early season riding. I caught a stump with my left A arm. Um, ended up taking up pretty much the whole left side of my sled off, so lower A arm, upper A arm, tie rod, and I bent the shock shaft for my Walker Evans Velocity Shocks. They're part number 405, no, 704-5529. Um, in my haste of finding out everything I needed to order, I took the parts of, I took the shock apart without getting that on video. So what we're doing now, I'm just going to go through how I got the shock apart. We're going to take a look at what's inside, what I had to order and kind of work through my path forward to get this shock rebuilt and back on my sled. Let's go. So this is kind of an exploded view of what the shock would look like constructed. Um, down here we have your high end bearing, the lower support. This holds the spring, that guy slides in there. To get mine off, what I did was just kind of, I was able to cons compress the spring enough down with my hands that this piece would slide out outside of the rod and then the shock should come all the way down and off. So got rid of those parts. From there, I don't think it's the correct order, but what I did is I put the shock in some vice grips and undid this bolt with my crescent wrench. From that, this whole assembly here comes out of the shock. Um, when you're doing this, the shock is up like this, and then the reservoir or you know piston area is filled with oil. So that gets rid of those two parts. From here, I was kind of stuck. There's really not a lot of information online for how to get these open. So here is your internal floating piston or IFP. So what this does is it sits in here on the lower side, you have the oil in the shock with the ports and the adjustment for your high and low speed. This is your reservoir cap. It sits on top and is held in place with this um, snap ring style thing. And it's really hard to get out because between the cap and the IFP, there should be 200 pounds of nitrogen. Um, when I took this off, what that would have done is the nitrogen would have pushed the IFP all the way down, but I still had pressure between the cap and the IFP, which is kind of good because that tells you that nothing was leaking, but with all of the nitrogen pressure in the middle there, I couldn't get this to go down far enough to pull this snap ring out. And so finally looking online, you know, I read things about relieving the pressure with a needle. At first I thought that was like a type of air needle you would use on a basketball or something. So if we open up this guy, there is a screw on here. With a um, little plastic seal. And then in looking down there, I thought this would be some kind of a valve. It's actually not a valve. It's referred to as a pellet. So there's the other side of it. It's basically just a soft piece of plastic that's slid in there and you actually need a needle on your nitrogen bottle. You poke the needle through the pellet to get the air in there. And the problem I was dealing with is I had no way of relieving that pressure. Lucky enough, I came across an actual needle. So what I was able to do 
was put the needle down into the pellet to relieve the nitrogen pressure. It worked really well. It didn't, you know, explode or anything. I believe that's a 25 gauge needle. These are self healing pellets. So once you puncture it, it shouldn't leak. And even if it does a little bit, you should have your retaining screw to, you know, keep any leaking out of there. Try to get you a good shot of the inside of the reservoir. And we'll look down the cylinder is what I'm going to call it. Um, you can see it right around this level of the cylinder. There is six holes all around. Those are going to be your ports for the adjustment of your high and low speed. These shocks do not have needles. So some of these you can look down and there'll be a needle sticking straight up. That needle would typically go through this hollow shaft to change the porting for your adjustments, allowing it to be super soft low. And as the shock slides up, the needle fills some of those holes, forcing it to go through your dampener. Taking a closer look at the dampener in the way it's installed in the shock, this is the lower side over here. This is the upper side with the nut that holds it onto the shaft. In operation of this, there is a bunch of little discs, which are your valving for your adjustment. The ones on the bottom are going to be your compression. So as the shock compresses, the dampener moves through the cylinder this way, forcing the oil through the dampener, and it actually will open up these valves. And that's your compression for your, that is your valving for your compression, moving this direction, oil's going that way, out the valves on your rebound is the opposite. So the oil, on your rebound via the shock opening your shock back open will push the dampener this way forcing oil through there and um, opening these valves on this side so that's your rebound valving um, valves got a little distracted there we we're back with this guy i put the needle in there we have our ifp and our cap when i put the needle through the pellet it relieved the nitrogen pressure in the cylinder which allowed me to push the cap down enough to get the snap ring out so then that was out at that point i was a little disappointed because the IFP sits in the shock like this, and from all of the videos I'd seen, there's a threaded nut right here, which would allow you to install a tool down onto the nut and pulling the IFP out. I didn't have that, so what I actually did was came out to my shop, so the IFP was down pretty much nearly to the bottom. I ended up taking this, installing it back onto the shock, and then just using air pressure, I put that on there, and with a little bit of air pressure, I pressurized this cylinder, and this guy popped out. So up to that point, I had access to everything. Um, like I said, because I couldn't get this cap off, I knew that I didn't have any leaks around here. My main issue was this rod. I was also worried about the reason I got the rebuild kit. So this guy's installed like that. My shock was probably bent like this before I bent it back. And so I was worried about all the seals in here 
If we try to get a good look, you can see this is a little beat up. I didn't see that part when I looked at the picture of the $20 service rebuild, so that's why I ordered the complete rebuild. Um, still haven't gotten these out, but I did go to Harbor Freight, pick up a bunch of different picks and stuff, so hopefully we can get that apart today. Again, I worked with high gear suspension um, to get the parts that I needed. The guy there, Justin, was super helpful. He also said that he'll be able to get me the IFP depth, which is really important. So, and also a problem that I'll run into in rebuilding the shock. So, when you're rebuilding the shock, you want to fill this with oil first. It'll probably slowly be leaking out. But if you fill that with oil, if you had the right tool, you should be able to drop this down and then set your IFP depth. The most common one I've seen is two inches, but like I talked about earlier, this is a very squatty reservoir and it's only two inches deep. So. And that's not even counting, you know, I imagine when they say two inches, it's from the top of the reservoir down to the top of the IFP. So if that's sitting all the way at the bottom, I've only got an inch and a half. So I'm going to work with Justin, hopefully get an IFP depth. Another thing I can do to find the IFP depth is I still have the right side shock on my sled. I could take that one apart, which I should do they say if you service one shock you should do them both i obviously wouldn't be rebuilding that one i'd just be servicing it and replacing the oil but in taking that shock apart i could find its ifp depth and then set this ifp depth from there once i get the ifp depth i'm going to fill this with oil now there's air in all these lines and we don't want air there so what i'm going to do is flip it then upside down with this filled with oil, I will push the IFP into the reservoir and that should purge most of the oil out. In the videos I've seen with the tool, the guys kind of plunger it back and forth a few times to work all the air bubbles out of the porting up into the cylinder. What I'm going to have to do is the same thing I did to get the IFP out. This will be filled with oil. I'll push this out, pushing the oil into the reservoir. I'll fill this with oil. And then to kind of plunger it back and forth, I'm just going to install this, put a stopper under the vise so that the IFP can't pop all the way out. And I'll pressurize it, pushing the IFP down. Then I'll push the IFP up, kind of plunger it back and forth to make sure I get all the air bubbles purged out before I drop in the dampener and the rod and all that. I have gone and talked to my local Polaris dealer and they said they don't rebuild these shocks. They ship them off to be rebuilt. Um, since I'm doing this myself, they do have the equipment to charge the nitrogen. So they should have the needle and the nitrogen. The guys in the service department were super cool. They just said, bring it in. We'll, you know, charge it up for you. So I, don't even think they'll charge me, but you know, it'll still be cheaper and quicker than if I had to send this off to high gear or send this off to Carl's in Boise or anything like that. Obviously another thing you guys might want to take a look at is the oil that came from the shock. Let's see if I can't get so if you can see down there i've just got in this little gatorade jug um there's not a lot i mean i'd be surprised if that was like six ounces but mine wasn't too dirty there was definitely some particles you can see this build up around the very bottom i don't know if um, that's just like oxidized oil from cavitation or maybe it's part of this 
outer part of the dampener that just kind of slowly gets rubbed off. But we'll be changing that oil. I know Polaris has a oil available specifically for Walker Evan shocks. It's 24 bucks a quart, which I thought was ridiculous until I looked at like AMS oil shock therapy 5W lightweight and that was 20 bucks. So I'll probably just end up ordering the Polaris Pacific oil. Um, with how much is in here, shoot, I should be able to do like at least six shocks with a quart of oil, I'd imagine. All right, guys, unfortunately, that's all we got for today. I am expecting parts this week to get the shock all put back together. So if you want to make sure you don't miss that, make sure to subscribe. If you found the video useful, hit that like button. Um, hoping to have all this stuff back together by the end of this week. So I'll be seeing you soon. Thanks for watching.